so uh, we found out that we were expecting in 2017, in January. So at this point, we already had two children. Um, as I mentioned, one of them was gifted to us. Um, one of them was our biological child. So with our biological daughter, we had no issues. I had a bit of hyperemesis, so like extreme sickness in pregnancy um, with her. Went to hospital, had some IV fluids, and I was pretty much okay after that. I went home, just had to take it easy for a bit, but I was okay, still a bit sick, but nothing too major. Um, so then when, when we found out we were expecting 2017, it was a really different uh, pregnancy. Um, I was sick pretty much from the beginning. Couldn't tell you when exactly it started, but the high premises came back again um, fairly quickly. So I was in and out of hospital for IV fluid. Um, a midwife that we know worked there. And the first time I went, we hadn't really told anyone we were expecting. And I got wheeled in to triage and she was there. Mm. And I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, <why? laughs> so I guess I'm pregnant. Um, but I was really unwell. And whenever we'd go there, we'd see her and she'd be like, oh, back again. So it was like really laborious going in all the time. Um, I remember doing a school run and coming out of school and like being sick in a bin before I'd even got to my car. So because I was so ill, quite a few of the mums knew um, that I was expecting. And the last school run I did, I was 15 weeks pregnant. And I just remember because I spoke to one of the mums there and she was like, you just look awful. Um, after that point, the hyperemesis got so bad that I couldn't get out of bed. Um, I was being sick just constantly. Um, I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't drink anything. Uh, at one point I was having ice lollies because I could kind of lick them just to get a bit of like fluid and sugar. Um, but that didn't last very long. Um, I have to give a shout out to Alec and our friend Leone because Leon was trying to work at the time um, in like Leicester. Leicester? Um, so he was struggling to do the school run and get to work on time. And he was being threatened with like the loss of his job because he was late. And then he was having to finish early to pick the kids up because I was bed bound. And Alex and Leone were like coming to the house. They washed Nora's hair for me. Like they were taking the kids to school, picking them up and like, just like being amazing. Um, but yeah, the sickness got really, really bad. Um, and obviously when you're being sick, but you're not consuming anything, it's not really much to be sick, but I was sick like 13, 14 times in a day and I had nothing to eat. So I was really unwell. Uh, we went to hospital again. Uh, they, they ask you to do a urine sample to measure the ketones in your urine. So it's the protein in your urine. And that shows, um, it essentially it's like your body going into ketosis. So it's eating its own fat supply, which you don't want to do when you're pregnant. And I was so unwell at that point that I couldn't give them the sample. I just couldn't stand up in the toilet. Uh, and a doctor came by and weighed me and realized that at that point I'd lost about three stone, um, oh, just from being oh. unwell. I was admitted to hospital and I spent about four or five days there on fluids, um, anti-sickness medication. I can't swallow tablets. So I had to have everything through like injections and IV. Um, came home on the Thursday and I wasn't given the last dose of anti-sickness that I asked for and I was sick in the cab on the way home and the high premises started again from that point. Um, so that week was awful, but we had the following Thursday, we had our 20 week scan to like look forward to. Um, so, my mum had come up at that point to help out and the sickness was still really bad. And we decided that, that on the morning of the scan, we kind of spoke to each other and said, you know what, after this scan, we're going to triage again. Um, because this, where we had our scan was a separate hospital to where the maternity triage was. So we, we'd already decided after the scan, we're going straight to the hospital um, because the sickness is back, it's really bad. Um, I also couldn't, like swallow my own saliva so I couldn't speak because I had to keep spitting it was really disgusting um 
So we got into the scan and I think one thing that we've been told a lot was sickness. That's a really good sign. You know, sick mum means healthy baby. And we got told that so many times. Um, and then, yeah, we went into the scan. Even the sonographer was like, saw me walk in with a bag and she was like, oh, you've been really sick. And that's normally a good sign. <laughs> um, and I remember like lying on the couch, whatever you call it. And she put the, what's it called? Gel on and all the rest of it. And I remember looking at the screen and thinking, something's not right. And I think it's so odd because we'd never been through anything like this before, but something just wasn't right. And I was a bit like panicky. And then she told us, I'm really sorry, but I can't find a heartbeat. Let me go and get somebody else to have a, have a look and we'll see if we can get a second opinion. And at that point, I didn't look at the screen anymore because I just thought, I, I know what you're gonna say to me. I can see that my baby is not moving. Um, I couldn't be, tra I couldn't track movements because I was so unwell that everything felt like I had a lot of stomach pains and kind of gripey feeling anyway. So I was mistaking that for movement. Even on the morning, I was like uncomfortable. My mom said to me, oh, you're okay. And I said, oh, I think it's just baby moving. Um, so yeah, they called in the second person to have a look. And they just told us there's no heartbeat um, and kind of asked us if we wanted them to call through to the hospital, um, which they did. Um, so we just, we drove straight there, called my mom, drove straight there. Uh, and the same midwife that we know was there. And again said, oh, same thing again. And I just remember like breaking down, like when they first told us, I was like, I, I was wailing. Um, and then we got to the hospital and she just hugged me. And I don't think I've ever needed a hug so much in my life. Mm -hmm. um, like she just held me. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really horrible experience actually. I remember them walking us through, taking us to room one. And you could see that it was like a fit for purpose room. This was like, this was the room where you, this was the room you went to when you weren't taking your baby home. Um, I think I didn't have the same faith that like Cherie um, expressed because I was so angry. I was so angry with God that in that room, I was texting Leon because I still couldn't speak saying, why has God let me be so ill? And then I don't even get the prize at the end. Mm -hmm. um, it was just such a horrible experience to go through like five months of pregnancy horrible pregnancy to then not have a baby at the end is a really difficult process to go through um what happens then is that you I was allowed to, Leon was allowed to stay my mum actually came she was allowed to stay as well um so we went in on the Thursday because they needed to get my anti-sickness under to get my anti-sickness going to get my sickness under control they said that I could stay um a lot of people they give them first dose of medication you come back after a couple of days to start the labor process um but because I was so unwell they just kept me there on a drip kept me on anti-sickness and Leon and my mum were there as well and then you have your baby and that's um essentially what happens your labor is induced and you go through that process then and you have the options of kind of meeting your child or not meeting them it's up to you as a parent um but it's a very difficult experience and I think that we are always kind of told like, don't tell anybody that you're pregnant until you get to at least 12 weeks because what if something happens? And I think it's so negative because the suggestion there is that if something does happen that it's, it's because of you or you should be embarrassed to tell people that you've had a loss and you shouldn't be. If you want to tell people when you find out, you, you just done a clear blue and it says one to two weeks, tell people if you have a loss, it's devastating but it's also useful that you have people there that you can talk to. Um, we were at 20 weeks, we were halfway. You don't expect at 20 weeks that you're gonna have a loss either. You know, we couldn't have kept it secret all of that time. So does that make it like better or worse? You know, it's just <laughs> to be open about it um, wherever you can. I know that I had that experience, but Leon's experience was probably 
different because he was on the other side of it. But before Leon goes, if he does go, okay, Rebecca, I think that you and Sheree are so brave. I, I, I honestly, I'm so proud of you both. Like, I just think just for sharing and for explaining what you've gone through um, is just so heartwarming. And um, just, just not, not only that, but it's almost like we will never, those who have never been through it, I haven't been through it. But like Sheree said, you know, you can always em empathize with people, mm. but you can never really relate until you've had the experience. And so, you know, the fact that you're sharing this, I, I just think it's awesome. Thank you so much. And again, God bless you too. And, and bless, bless your household too. And just continue to just be super and strong like you are because you both, you're both amazing, amazing. You really are. Leon, do you want to add to, to, to it from your think, point of view? Yeah, just, 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 just quickly then. Um, I would say that um, it, it, was a, it was a challenging time. Uh, I would always say that my experience probably won't come anywhere near, anywhere close to Becca's experience because she had to do so much more um, and when you're actually carrying a child, it's, it, I think it, it's a completely different that game, that like game altogether. Um, uh, yeah, man, it was it was a challenging time, it was a challenging time, and I think that experiences like this make you appreciate the the stories of the struggles that we've we've already spoken about, um, and you know, doing that shopping and and and, and maybe struggling financially at times or buying those you know um you know four pairs of jeans one time it makes you appreciate those moments because mm -hmm. you know you, you're, you're, we're blessed with children um and that that's it like that's a blessing that's, that's it like it's, it's a blessing in itself and it makes me appreciate what we have um and it, you know it it, it it means that we're, we're blessed to have children you know um in our, in our, ourselves everyone has children here so um, we need to give thanks and praise where where we can really because boy difficult difficult situation difficult experiences but we still give give praise to god yeah. mm. that's it thank, thank you thank you oh i feel like i just lay down now and just feel like lord <laughs> oh yeah. um yeah mm -hmm. We, but at the same time, as much as you have gone through these experiences, and this is not trying to brush it under the carpet, but we want to focus on the the positives too. So you've you got some beautiful children, <laughs> you know that they're, they're so lovely. Like even I remember the first time I met um, what's the what's the little one? The li the, the li little ones. No, <laughs> no, no, my <laughs> friend, the one at Abba Darren. Oh, Anna. Anna. Anna, that's Anna. it. I didn't even need to know her name. I was like, come on, cutie, just come and do this like this, mate. She's yeah. so lovely. And like even, even that experience alone, like such beautiful children that like, just are uh, just raised by amazing people. You like they're a reflection of you. Caleb and I is that same thing. They're a reflection of the love and and support that you kind of put into them and the energy and everything. They're beautiful. Um, I claim them as my own, as you know, I, I don't have any boys, I have girls, so those are my sons, so I take credit for them, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, but, I mean, but for real, for real, like, you, you both, both couples are awesome, and I just admire you, we admire you, so, you know, fair play to you for the strength, for sharing, and for um, encouraging, encouraging definitely encouraging, encouraging others. On their journey because people that are watching this may experience this in years to come you know and this is some now that now that you have shared this you know they they can say that you know what i'm not alone there are other people and they can take on board the fact that you know have people around you who can support you who can help you um the sisterhood the brotherhood have your village around you that can support so um yeah absolutely thank you so much for sharing um we're gonna just dig a little bit deeper so like with your with with your experience um just as parents this is so how do you 
how do you cope with like the the the, the whole loss? Not not just in not just in when you lose a child, but just loss in in when you cut, say for example, you might have been trying for a while and the disappointment. So even before you get to that point of where a baby is formed, you know, how do you deal with that that sort of situation? Mm. How do you deal with the loss? How do you deal with the struggle? What's what's what your you, coping what's your coping mechanisms yeah. for that? Uh, for us, I think it was each other, um, mm. because if we didn't encourage each other, um, we didn't sit down and pray together, then we wouldn't be able to turn to anybody. So we had to, that, that, that loss and dealing with the loss had to start our home first um, and, just being, and just being understanding to each other. Obviously, like Leon's saying, the loss for Cherie is going to be greater than it is for me, but I am still going to feel loss as well. Mm. But... Sheree then has to accept for me that I'm going to have feelings or saddened feelings as well on top of her feeling. So it's quite difficult, but you have to do with that at home first. I think what I'd add to that as well is there is no rule book. Like, no one can tell you this is how you have to deal with it. But but for us, like, I, I was a talker, so every time I felt like, you know, I just needed to talk about it. Whereas there were times where Jonathan didn't want to, um, and sometimes he wanted to just have his moment of quiet, which was difficult because I needed to talk to mm. someone about it. And if I can't talk to him about it, then I'm stuck. So yeah, I used to just talk a lot about <laughs> about how I was feeling, my anger, my upset. And then I did have times where I felt like, yes, I understood he was suffering and feeling loss, but mine was greater. Um, but I had to stop myself from feeling guilt um, and stop myself from feeling like he was angry at me be- yeah. because he wasn't. And I was actually just working up for him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like talking. Talking was really important for us. That like really, really important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think um, different people cope in really different ways. Um, I know that Leon really threw himself into his faith. Um, and as I said, I was I really struggled with that in the beginning. Like I found it really hard to like be friends with God because I was just so angry and I spent a lot of time being angry. And um, like we delivered our son on the Sunday and the following week, the Sabbath. Leon was like, okay, let's go to the afternoon program. And I was like, okay. And like, I kind of went and I spent a lot of time just crying there. And we just coped so differently at the time. And like Cherie said, I felt guilty. Like my body had not just betrayed like myself. It hadn't just betrayed our son, but it had betrayed Leon as well. And I was so annoyed that I couldn't like keep this child um, and I had to try and navigate those feelings as well. Like I didn't do anything wrong. I couldn't have made the situation better. Um, there's nothing I could have done. They even said the sickness was not even part of it. it. They were two completely unrelated incidents. And it was really hard, but I definitely think that speaking about it um, has been helpful. Um, I think you need to have a good group of people that you can speak to as well, because I started to feel like I was exhausting people talking about it. And I remember saying to somebody, I'm sorry that I'm talking about this again. And they said to me, like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm your friend, I'm here to listen, like it's okay. And you need those people who will be there so that when you do feel like you're going on, which you can feel like that, they're just there to say, actually, do you know what? Go on, like keep going on, like, your child has died. Go on about it. Like that's normal and it's okay. So I think as long, like, as, long as you've got good support system, um, you're okay. And if you don't, some people don't have good support systems. If you don't, there are places that you can go to to reach out to people. And I will always say, if anybody ever wants to talk, I'm here. I'm happy to talk to people about things like this. Um, so if you're watching and you do think, oh, I know Rebecca I'm here. I'm happy to kind of talk. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs>